Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it's time once again for the main event of the AM. And leading the way, your host, moderator, and guide to the markets, Walker England here speaking on behalf of DailyFX.com. Now, I do want to welcome you back here on a Thursday as we pick up our webinar discussion on technical trading tools and tactics. And today, I have several tools to discuss for a trend-based strategy. So ultimately, I want you to leave here with a better understanding of the ADX and RSI indicator and how to apply them together for trend trading. So I can't wait to get started. We do have an exciting program here today, uh, one we haven't picked up in some time. But due to popular request, ADX is back. So I want to go ahead and get rolling as quickly as possible. And of course, I do want to begin today's webinar with a quick look at the go-to webinar software. Why? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be your conduit to me. So please, if you have any questions, thoughts, or concerns about today's program, all you need to do is ask. Today, we're going to be working on charting, so get your chart request in as well, and we'll work through as many examples as absolutely possible. Now, also, I am going to have some articles about our technical trading tools here today, and I do have a copy of our free 27 forecast, so if you want to take advantage of those, I am going to uh, try out the chat box now, and this is going to be for our free Forex trading guide. So if you want to take advantage of that, it is some good reading, and you can follow that up at the following link. Now, with that being said, let's go in and take a quick look at some of our disclaimers here for today. First things first, I do have my risk disclaimer, very important because yes, ladies and gentlemen, we can lose money when trading. So, it's important to remember that we should only be trading with risk capital, also known as monies that we can afford to lose. Equally as important, this is my final disclaimer for today, my hypothetical trading disclaimer. Now this one, going to be important because first, hey, yours truly on this end of the mic, I cannot guarantee you returns inside of your live trading account. And most importantly, past performances of any strategies discussed within our time here together, certainly not indicative of future results. So good stuff, make sure you give those a read. And as we get things rolling here today, I am going to ask a quick poll question. I want to know, are you familiar with ADX? And this one, just a guess, I am familiar. Maybe you're already trading with ADX. Good, you'll be one step ahead of the curve here. Uh, two, it's going to be a simple no, you're not familiar. Uh, maybe you've heard of it, but you never actively used it. And last but not least, if you're completely unfamiliar with what ADX is, hey, first, don't sweat it. You're in the right place to learn. But uh, more importantly, this does let me guide the group accordingly based off of where we stand. So please, please, please go ahead and participate in our quick poll here today. Okay, I see the results in, and it seems like the majority of you falling into the no category. 8% of you haven't used ADX or are completely unfamiliar. So uh, let's start off with the indicator itself. Here's ADX. It's going to be an acronym for the Average Directional Index, right? And if you're looking for it, the easiest way to find it is just go in and search Average. And here it is. It's going to be the Average Directional Index. Now, what it's going to do is produce a 14-period line very similar to the one I have here on my graph. Now, of course, we could change the settings and we could change the defaults, but for today, we're just going to leave everything defaulted at the standard 14 period. Now, the big question is this. What on earth is this line telling us? How is it different than any other line that we had on our graph? Well, the first caveat when it comes to ADX, it looks like an oscillator line, right? It looks like the RSI indicator that we'll be adding to our graphs here momentarily, but nothing could be further from the truth. When we trade with ADX, 
it's actually going to be used to qualify the strength of the trend and it is completely devoid of a directional bias let me say that again it is not an oscillator and it is completely void of directional bias so what we'll find is times when the market is moving down and ADX is up vice versa sometimes the market will be trading up and ADX will be up as well so with no rhyme or reason right we'll find that ADX is very good at what it does, but we should not misinterpret it just for the fact that could get us into big trouble. So let's go ahead and repeat that one more time. I'll inevitably get a question about this later in the webinar. So last but not least, ADX is not an oscillator. What it's doing is telling us the strength of the trend. Now this is very important to traders. Why? Well, we always talk about, hey, find the trend and find the strongest trends in markets and ADX actually lets us quantify through this indicator the strength of the trend now basically for those of you that are tracking the calculations behind the indicator ADX is a little more complicated, but long story short, it's looking at the average movement of price for the specific number of periods. And as we see, those price trends start to grow. What do we have? Well, we have ADX go ahead and extend itself to the top side. Vice versa, when we start to see trending markets go ahead and wane, and let's take a look here at an example when we had our change in trend on the dollar CAD back here in November. Well, what happened? We saw our range start to narrow. We saw our averages in terms of price go ahead and contract. And what did we see? Well, ADX drifted off to the downside so if we know how to read this indicator we can very quickly decipher whether the trend is going to be well just getting started or warmed up is it going to be a strong trend or a very strong trend at that so what I want to do is actually look at ADX in terms of its values here and the easiest way is to uh, just take your line and go ahead and draw in some variables here at 25 25 to 0 again 0 is going to be the lowest we can't go below 0 here but the first quarter of ADX this is going to be areas where we would say that the market is absent of a trend or it's starting to develop a relatively weak trend so anything underneath 25 well maybe these are markets that we want to avoid especially since our discussion today is all about looking for trend based opportunities I want to find the periods where the trends are going to be the strongest a case in point I can go back to the summertime here notice how ADX spiked above 25 and it read all the way up to 55 now that doesn't mean that every price bar was going down but we would definitely say that this was a strong trend bias to the downside and we could see from that crossover all the way to its peak we had a drop of uh, just about 230 pips here on the four hour chart now let's continue looking at ADX we can continue adding our quadrants here 25 to 50 this is going to be the levels where we start to see our strong trends develop and we can even go even further uh, 50 to 75 we would be in territories where we would have extremely strong trends and the strongest of strong trends would read 75 to 100 but again looking down at the chart if I scroll back historically again relatively few times are we going to see the 75 to 100 line breached now for today's webinar when we're talking about ADX I want to focus on strong trending markets and my qualifier is going to be this area right in the middle 
I want to look for readings between 25 and 50 to help me see if the market is in a strong trend. So the dollar cat on this four hour chart, what would we say about it? It's at a reading now of, uh, let's go ahead and check out our current reading, just about 31 and change. So this would qualify as a strong trend. We can see this trend starting to move up. We'll talk about that more in just a minute, but this allows me to focus on this particular graph. Let's run through some of the chart requests here very quick. And this one is going to be from Gary. Uh, sorry, Gary, no pivots today. If you want to talk about pivots, you can catch me on Twitter later. Um, but if we're taking a look at the Aussie dollar, what do we see? What well, we see a strong trend developing on the Aussie dollar. Now, why would I say that? Again, when I add my zones here, I've got ADX well over that 25 range, and it's in between uh, the 50 mark. So it's right here in the area where we would say that we do have a strong trend developing, and we're starting to see that trend come out uh, through a series of higher highs, at least at present. So Let's take a look at another one. This one coming in from guys saying, uh, yes, uh, take a look at the Euro Pound. Sure, Euro Pound. Let's move in and take a look at the Euro Pound at this point in time. What I want to do is go ahead and add my line here. And what do we see? Well, ADX is now going to be underneath 25. For me, this is indicative of a consolidating market. We're seeing average prices just basically flatline for the last 14 periods, and I think we would all reasonably agree with this assessment. Now, that's not to say that the euro pound can't break out, very well might, but we don't know when. And the thing is, I'm looking for opportunities to trade the market's strongest trends, and when I compare the euro pound to some of our other pairs, maybe like the dollar cad in our previous example, which one would you say is trending stronger? I think at this point in the conversation, it becomes fairly clear, right? We do see the dollar cad trending stronger than the euro pound. Okay, uh, great question. This one saying, uh, do we have to use ADX on the four hour time frame? In short, no. What you're going to find is ADX is just like any other indicator, right? We can use it on virtually any time frame. Now, the difference is, again, just like any indicator, can we apply it effectively? Sure, I can zoom this down to my one-minute graph, but again, I'll see readings over 25, but how long are these trends lasting? Sure. We saw a strong trend develop, but it only lasted for about 20 pips. And by the time we got that movement, we quickly saw the consolidation phase on this one minute graph. But can you actually read ADX on the one minute? Absolutely. It just becomes uh, very hard for us to apply any trade-based strategy. So it's very similar to ADR in that regards. Um, if we're looking at ATR, again, it's looking at the range in terms of the number of pips that we see on any given period, and they just tighten too much on these smaller period charts to make them effective. But the indicator is going to do the calculation regardless of what you view. Now, the reason why I started on the four hour chart here is because I want to gauge the strength of the longer term trend. Now it's not multi time frame analysis, right? In the sense where we're finding the direction of the trend on our longer term chart and then we're zooming into our shorter term chart for execution. No, quite the contrary. What I'm doing is checking the strength on my longer term chart. I want to make sure that there is a general sense of momentum in the market longer term before I even consider dropping down to my shorter term charts 
for execution. And the four hour, it's a nice midpoint, right? It's not so long term that I can't zoom in and look for day trading opportunities and uh, vice versa. It's not so short term that we make the readings of ADX basically obsolete due to the size of the bars on our screen. But feel free to go ahead and play around with ADX. You get a new tool. You certainly want to try it out. But uh, just remember that up front about our time frames. So let's continue with our analysis here. And I want to move back to our first chart. This was going to be for the dollar CAD. Okay, take a look at the dollar CAD. We're back up above 30. We see that breakout yesterday that we talked about to the top side. We're now arguably into a strong trend-based scenario. So I want to go ahead and take ADX off my screen, and I want to move into my one-hour time frame. So I've gone from my four-hour trend to a one-hour chart for execution basis. Now, how are we going to time our execution for today? I want to use the RSI indicator. How many of you are familiar with RSI? I know a lot of you are, but just a quick show of hands through uh, the yes or no inside of the question box. Type a Y if you are. If I say RSI and you are absolutely devoid of any connotation of RSI, that's okay, but please type in and in. That way I know how long to spend on this segment of our presentation. And while you do, I'm going to cut and paste a quick link outside uh, our chat box here. This is to a oldie but a goodie written by Mr. Tyler Yeo, my colleague here in the Dallas branch. Basically, it's going to give you a review of everything that we spent our first 20 minutes on. Just basically telling you about ADX how to see if the trend is weak, strong, very strong, or extremely strong. So you can move from here and then start looking for opportunities to trade. Okay, let's go ahead and add RSI to our graph. Now RSI, I see a few of you that are unfamiliar. Let me give you the quick overview. It is the Relative Strength Index. Now, this one looks a lot like ADX, but again, it's completely different. ADX is designed to track the strength of the trend. RSI is showing us market momentum and direction. Basically, RSI is tracking the changes in price to see if prices are generally moving up or down. That is the gist of the indicator. But traditionally, what we do is divide this indicator into parts as well. Now, this is going to be a bound oscillator, which means it can never move above 100 or below zero. But the most important marks for today are going to be 70 and 30. These are the lines that are affectionately referred to as overbought and oversold. Now, what does overbought and oversold mean? Well, what we're learning with these values is whether RSI is making a new relative low or a new relative high. If the market's making a new relative high, we'd say hey, it's starting to get overbought. Now, if we see it starting to move down and we see RSI move under 30, well, we're making a relative low. We're looking at it being oversold. Now, traditionally, traders that are using RSI are looking at these values for crossovers. And we'll look at those crossovers here momentarily. But the key is to actually use RSI to find the trend in this example. So. Let's go ahead and take what we've learned from ADX. We know that we have a strong trend developing. We do know that RSI is going to be currently overbought. Does that mean that I necessarily want to look for a retracement back underneath that overbought, uh, that overbought level at 70? No, quite the contrary. I'm using this as a trend filter. If I start seeing RSI overbought, for an extended period of time, when we have a strong trend, this is telling me that we have an uptrend in place. 
Because remember, it's showing me whether we're making those relative highs or lows, and if I'm making a series of higher highs and an uptrend, that's an absolute good thing. So I want to use that in my analysis. Now, vice versa, if I'm looking at a strong downtrend in the market, let's go back and we will go a few days back. This is going to be last month in December. As prices were declining, where was RSI? It was actually spending the majority of time down here in the oversold camp, indicating that the trend is going to be down. So, very helpful, right? Because ADX, while it's showing me that there's a trend, it's missing one key component. It's not telling me what direction my bias is. And that's where RSI is going to come into play. Let's go ahead and take a look at another example here. Going into a chart request, this one, going to be for the dollar yen absolutely we can queue up the dollar yen and what i want to do is see the dollar yen now going to be back above this overbought value at least at present so to be congruent with our analysis let's go ahead and first review adx on the four hour chart and I'll just go ahead and put RSI away for a brief period of time. We see ADX going to be above 25. So yes, this does count as a developing strong trend in the market as long as we stay above that 25 reading. So this does qualify me to move in and start looking for execution signals on my one hour chart. Now, when I move to my one hour chart, I turn ADX off, I turn RSI on, and now I can see that we're moving off of these overbought values, which help me identify the trend, but can also help me determine my point of execution. Now, this is where our crossovers are going to come into play. Again, typically, trainers are looking at this overbought region for an opportunity to fade the momentum of the market when it turns back in the opposing direction. However, for today's webinar, we're not going to be looking to fade momentum. We actually want to trade a resumption of that trend, which means I'm trading a crossover back above the 70 line. Let's look at a sample signal here. We did have one um, earlier in the session. We had this new high created. We see the retracement and the pullback, much related through our indicator. We have a new high. We see our pullback back underneath overbought. I'm not interested in selling. I'm actually interested in buying when the indicator crosses back up above 70. So what I can do here is look for opportunities to buy. Now, we see a small retracement here early in the morning. What do we have? Another crossover, another opportunity to buy. This would be on our candle here at $14.95. And again, we're looking for price to continue up towards a higher high. So essentially, this is another way of trading a breakout because when we trade breakouts, we're looking at a previous high or low with price action to establish a line of support and resistance for us to set entry orders. Now, we're just timing the new high right with our overbought value because overbought, just to repeat here, is showing us that we are indeed making a relative high. And we want to be making those relative highs in an uptrend. So every time this line ticks above 70, it can give me an opportunity to trade in this strong trend. Now, of course, the market doesn't have to continue going up. Very important to remember. Even though we've done and started our analysis with our trend in ADX, the market can shift trends can wane a lot of different things can happen here so uh what's it to me i'm looking at this graph for the first time i do know there's a trend going on in the dollar yen but we do see this retracement coming into play 
Now, what happens if there is a complete reversal, right, and we see the dollar yen drop off the map? Well, RSI, being a momentum indicator, is going to fall as well. So I'm not worried about trading here as the market is declining. This would actually be a scenario where I would say, hey, the trend is shifting. Maybe we're going to be devoid of the trend for a while in the consolidation, or maybe we even see a shift in the opposing direction. But if this scenario happens, hey, I haven't lost anything just for the fact that I haven't placed an order out there. I haven't had the confirmation of RSI clipping back over 70. That's why indicators are very helpful because they can help us time those entries into the trend. Now, vice versa, there can be times when the market does go against us and um, we need to be prepared for that scenario. Basically, we need to have a stop and a take profit order for every position that we take. Now, Let's look at this previous example here. Here was our last crossover. We know it occurred right at the top of this bar, and that would have put our hypothetical entry right near 114.91. I want to set my stop underneath my previous lows, somewhere along this graph. Basically what I'm saying is I'm looking at trading an uptrend, so if prices are making a lower low, I want to exit the market as quickly as possible. Very important because that would be a change in the trend, and if the market's making lower lows, do I want to be buying? In short, no, I want to go ahead and be flexible in my analysis and exit the market as quickly as possible. So for today, we're gonna to keep our analysis relatively simple. I'm just going to use a five bar low. Five bar low is just what it sounds. I count back five candles, which is five hours here. It's going to be one, two, three, four, and five, and find the lowest spot on the graph. So this is going to be my fifth candle here at 114.38. Again, I took my execution candle as one, my previous candle two, three, four, and five, and in an uptrend, I am finding the lowest price. So in this example, I would set my risk back down to this area. In short, saying low or low, just go ahead and get me out of there. Now from here, I just want to extrapolate a simple risk-reward ratio. Again, this is one of the areas where your analysis can be flexible on your preference, but I'm looking for at minimum twice the amount that I go ahead and risk. So if I'm risking uh, 56 pips, I want to look for just about 112 here. That takes me to 1608 for a potential profit target. Now, if you missed our risk management webinar, again, you can find it in the archive, but in short, the whole purpose in this example is to simply be making more when I'm right relative to when I am wrong. So that's going to be our sample or one of our samples for a ADX trend-based strategy using RSI for execution. Now we're 35 minutes past the hour. I do want to continue taking chart requests and answering your questions about these technical tools and tactics. And this one's going to be a comment from Gary saying, do you use Fibonacci? Uh, not today, no Fibonacci found in our strategy. Uh, me personally, I do use it sporadically throughout my analysis, but um, again, we'll save Fibonacci for another day. Fibonacci, good at what it does. It's a good way to find support and resistance. But again today, how are we defining our highs and lows? We already have that covered through the RSI indicator. But again, this is just one way out of many to trade. And I've had a lot of requests for Fibonacci. We had a webinar earlier in the year. Hard to believe that we're already clipping through the third week of January. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, go back and review the video archive. Okay, this one, going to be a question asking about RSI, saying, uh, what are the settings for the RSI indicator? The RSI indicator is going to be a defaulted 
14. Now, just like any other indicator, right, we can modify the settings, but the fewer settings we create, what do we do? We actually make our indicator more sensitive. So if I put this on a 7, right, we're going to see more extreme crossovers and oscillation of my indicator. Whereas if I go ahead and move this out, let's say I put RSI on a 20 here, now look at the difference, right? Not the extremities that we've had before. We have less entry crossovers to the top side, so that's something to consider as well. RSI is going to be one of the slower traditional oscillators. Now, again, that can be a good thing or a bad thing, best off of your preferences, but uh, know what you're doing when you're modifying those settings. So let's go in, change this back to our default of 14, and we'll go ahead and work from there. Okay, I've got another question saying, can you use other oscillators instead of RSI? Hey, by all means, right? This is basically a template of a trend-based strategy. You can apply any different combinations of tools and tactics that you would like to build out your own. RSI in this scenario is nice because it is slower moving, so it does tend to linger along these top and bottom lines in my experience. But it's not quick enough for you? Sure. Go ahead and plug in uh, something like Stochastics, maybe a CCI oscillator. All of those can, of course, uh, be different ways to customize your personal strategy. All right. Great comment there. Let's move into another chart request. Hey, guys. Thank you for your participation here today. This one is going to be for the Kiwi dollar. Sure. We'll go ahead and queue up the Kiwi. We did look at uh, the Aussie dollar briefly here, but let's go ahead and start off on our four-hour graph, right? We want to follow through, and I want to turn off RSI for a second, and I want to turn on a DX. Now, where is my reading? Well, my reading is going to be right above 30. I mean, we are very close to the line, but until we are proven otherwise, this line is still going to be above 30 at preference. Uh, that's going to be indicative of a strong trend, and I want to use that again to help form uh, my bias in my trading. So now I can drop down, look at my shorter term graph, Let's put this on the one hour chart. And what I want to do is now see where RSI is located. So we're not necessarily at either extreme here. Now, this is going to be an interesting scenario. There are going to be short term trends that do indeed turn. And what we're picking up on is we did have some strong velocity to the downside earlier in the session for the Kiwi dollar, but we have started to see a drift back up in the index uh, towards highs of the day. So at this point in time, do we necessarily want to trade? No, this is one we're leaving alone. We do need to see a new high or a new low through that validation with ADX. And uh, I believe that's partially why we're starting to see ADX drift down, starting to get a little bit of a range built in here. Uh, no new extremes over the last six hours or so. And if that's the case, this may be one where we're disqualified from uh, calling it a strong trend. So we may very quickly be looking for other graphs. Okay. Uh, this one, going to be asking about ADX, saying uh, what qualifies a strong trend? Now, again, there is some room for our analysis, but the most basic way to use it is to use these filters, right? 0 to 25, weak or no trend. Uh, 25 to 50, strong trend. 50 to 75, very strong trend. And 75 to 100. And we saw the Kiwi dollar at 30. So even though it's decreasing, it still falls into this strong trend criterion. Again, that may change in the future. We don't know. But if we just keep these guidelines right, it really helps us focus on what's going 
on with price action in the chart to make that educated based decision. Okay, uh, this one coming in from, well, it's two dashed lines, so dash dash saying, uh, thank you for the refresh on Wilder's indicators. Appreciate that you mentioned the volatility stop that also belonged to him. Hey, Wells Wilder did some great work, and who am I uh, to disagree? What I like about it, it's all very accessible in our charts, right? We can pull them up, we can use them, and quite a few different combinations. And that's what makes trading unique, right? Basically, we're all standing on the shoulders of these technical giants that came before us and divided these equations, and I'll be the first to tell you, hey, I'm not a mathematician on this end of the, the microphone, but still, we can go in, we don't have to be a mathematician to understand what the indicators are telling us and how to apply them, and I think that helps us all be consistent. And that is one of the reasons why I like this Technical Tools and Tactics webinar, because if we know how to read the indicators, we have a plan of action for trading them, then I should have a schedule of activities that I can do time and time again when I approach my trading terminal. So I do appreciate the feedback. Glad you're joined today's webinar. And um, those are always uh, welcome. So I appreciate the commentary there. Let's move into another chart request saying, take a look at gold. Absolutely. Um, let me go ahead and specify this. These techniques can be used on any variety of assets. It uh, can be used for CFDs such as gold just as easily as our favorite currency pairs here. So what I want to do is go ahead and push this out to the four hour. I do want to go ahead and expose ADX and I'll go ahead and take RSI off. Now this one looks a lot like our Kiwi dollar chart, right? I can see ADX right at about 28 now. So it's going to show the very extremity of what we start to call a strong trend. Now it may pick up from here, it may decline, but based off of how we trade today, we may see it drift down to that uh, 25 category. But for now, Again, we have to trade what we see, and we are indeed above that 25 mark. So I can uh, drop back down to my one-hour chart. I want to pull ADX off, and I want to go ahead and add um, RSI back on the graph. And we can see it's back in the middle of the range, again, uh, showing that we may be having a weakening trend. We're not quite at those extremes like we were earlier in the session, so uh, we'll keep an eye out for that. But if we start seeing gold either break out to new lows or new highs, what should we see happen? Regardless of the direction, I want to see ADX pick up. If we start breaking out the highs, what do we see with RSI? Well, we ought to be moving back over 70, right? Vice versa, if we quickly drop down to new lows, what do I need to see? RSI breaking back below 30. And that could help us initiate new cell-based positions here on the one-hour chart. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are 45 minutes past the hour. I do want to give you a moment to get in your final questions and concerns and chart request. And while you do, I want to get in uh, my survey for today's event. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I know you have options when it comes to your education, so I do want to thank you for spending your time here with me. But of course, I want to know the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between because your feedback matters and it allows me to continue bringing you the best presentations across markets. And that is going to be uh, my goal day in and day out. So please, I go to the following link and uh, let me know what you thought about today's webinar. Also, work your way down the survey. This is where you'll be able to uh, give your feedback for future events. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, hey, I want to talk about what you want to talk about, which means you got to let me know. So please, 
tell me what you want to see for future events click done and that will beam the form back off to yours truly I of course will give it a read and make amendments to the curriculum as dictated so please take the time and uh, go ahead and get that in okay uh, just a few moments remaining in our webinar here let's go in and take a quick chart request this one's going to be for the euro usd sure let's take it from the top here is going to be the euro dollar now in terms of the euro dollar on the four hour chart what do we need to do we need to take rsi off and we need to add adx now taking a look at adx here on the screen where do we stand well we're actually going to be down at the bottom of our ADX reading so for me this is going to be very telling right it's telling me at least temporarily hey maybe we shouldn't be looking for a trend based off of uh, the euro dollar so this one's going to be disqualified again if you need to just draw up that line and put it right on the 25 mark this way of course you can start using it as a reference now this all may change I don't know if the euro dollar is going to start trending or not it may absolutely go ahead and start to pick up steam if it does at that point in time hey I'm all for it but at least at present we have to say that well the trends not so strong here I need to go ahead and at least wait momentarily and if it does change then I'll be prepared and what am I gonna do in those instances I'll drop down to the shorter term charts I'll move into the one hour and that point I'll go ahead and add RSI see if I'm making a extreme and go ahead and prepare to execute so yes while it's not viable now doesn't mean that it won't in the future so please again keep those on the back burner those are going to be all charts that we can easily size up right what we're doing is looking at two time frames and two indicators and I think that's part of the appeal as well we can start looking at these very quickly and make fast intelligent based decisions okay this one uh, taking a look this is going to be for the dollar yen we did speak about the dollar yen earlier uh, the dollar yen on the four hour chart here we were looking at it at a level above 25 so we're starting to see a strong trend in play from here I can drop down to my one hour chart we did see the retracement after an earlier overbought extremity of RSI. So if you were able to take advantage of that, it would have been the breakout here above 114.90. Now we're seeing a bit of a pullback. Our next execution signal would actually be on a crossover back above 70. So great chart. We're just waiting patiently. That is part of trading, ladies and gentlemen. But if we've got all our rules for our strategy outlined, then we know when to go in and actively trade. Okay. Looks like we've run the gamut in regards to today's webinar. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as we come up to the conclusion of today's event, uh, let me say this. Yes, it's been a fun hour, but I do have this webinar recorded just in case you want to go and revisit any of the material today. You can do so on the YouTube channel, Daily FX News. Yes, that's us. This is where we post our video archives. So if you want to go ahead and uh, pause, play, resume, or check out any of the information, you absolutely I can do so here. Secondarily, I did say that there is a write-up about today's webinar. There is yours truly. I wrote this article on an ADX trend-based strategy. It's going to be on part six of our 2015 strategy series. So if you want a review of this, uh, feel free to go to the following link. 
of course, that is going to be on dailyfx.com. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and uh, Norman saying post the survey. Oh, did that not get out? Sure, let me go ahead and uh, make sure you get the webinar survey out, all of those links. And while I'm posting links, let me get you one more here as we wrap things up. I know we're almost done with our hour, but make sure to go in and watch the next webinar. Yes, Mr. James Stanley is going to be hitting the microphone in uh, just two short hours. Now, what we're going to find is James Stanley, he is talking all about price action. Call James the price whisperer. He talks about all sorts of different patterns and configurations. So make sure you learn specifically from James and uh, that's coming up in two short hours. Now it looks like yours truly, I am going to be off of the mic tomorrow, but that's absolutely okay. Hey, guys, I'm going to be back after a long weekend on Monday to pick up our conversation on day trading markets. So please go out there, try something new, use ADX, and learn how to read the indicator in real time. And that just comes with practice, practice, practice. At that juncture, hey, you'll be prepared when we start seeing those strong trends develop, which is what today's webinar was all about. I do want to thank you for your attendance here today. I do want to wish you all the best of luck in your trading. We'll pick up our discussion on Monday. I hope to see you all then. Have a good one.